In this video, we talk about a positive industry example of successful factor investing. It's about the Norway Sovon Wealth Fund. Norway has one of the largest Sovon Wealth Funds. At the end of 2012, its firepower was worth $130,000 per Norwegian. During the 2008-2009 financial crisis, the fund lost 20% of its capital. The Norwegian public was well informed and had a good understanding of investment concepts such as the CAPM. As a result, the public understood that high returns can only be earned in the long run if one invests in the systematic risks. And an event like the 2008-09 financial crisis was in fact the realization of a risky event for which one earns a premium in the long run. Yet the Norwegians were upset with the active return performance, which accumulated to minus 5% for the 2007-2009 period. The Ministry of Finance asked three academics to analyze the investment process of the fund. The team of professors concluded that, first, the majority of the fund's active return, both before, during and after the financial crisis, could be explained by a couple of systematic risk factors. Second, the fund did well investing into such risk factors as that allows it to earn risk premiums in the long run. Third, risk premiums were compensation for bad times, such as the current financial crisis. Fourth, in the future, risk premiums could be collected more cheaply through passive investment devices like exchange-traded funds. Fifth, the fund should move beyond static risk factors such as fixed income and equity investments to collect additional risk premiums. Sixth, the fund should invest into dynamic risk factors which involve dynamic trading and long-short positions. Examples include the value growth premium, momentum premium, short volatility strategies. Seventh, and finally, every asset class is nothing else than a unique combination of risk factors. Hence, asset allocation shouldn't focus on asset classes, but directly on risk factors. Now notice, the finance ministry of Norway gives out a passive benchmark, also called policy portfolio, which the active managers of the Sovereign Wealth Fund have to beat. One can hence decompose the fund's return R into the following two components. Where R BMK is the return of the policy portfolio and R minus R BMK is the fund's active return. The academics concluded that Norway's active return explained on average 10% of the Sovereign Wealth Fund's return variance. Moreover, the policy portfolio doesn't consist of individual securities, but rather of asset classes. In order to earn an active return R minus RBMK, the asset manager engages either in tactical asset allocation or in security selection. Tactical asset allocation aims to time the assets within the policy portfolio to benefit from short-term opportunities and to limit temporary drawdowns. On the other hand, security selection picks securities within each asset segment of the policy portfolio. So the active return has therefore these two components, the timing component and the selection component. Got feedback? We would love to hear it. Please drop us a line. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.